The entire 3D community has been bursting with excitement ever since Clinton Jones, aka Punisher, who was a former member of the Corridor crew, decided to host another huge 3D community render challenge after the first one was a massive success. And this time, it was on just a whole nother level because there were 2,401 submissions this time compared to the total of 125 last time. And of course, I couldn't miss such an awesome opportunity to test and push my limits, so I participated too. So in this video, I'll be condensing 110 gigabytes of video recordings and over 100 hours of work into a few minutes. So get ready to take some notes because I'll be sharing everything that I learned from this project. It will be in a vague way though, so don't expect me to go over each detail of every technique that I use. But if there's any topic that I discuss in this video that you want a separate tutorial on, then do let me know in the comments down below but yeah let's get into the video now so as a criteria for the challenge we were given this template and we're asked to keep the character's animation untouched only with the exception of moving the hands if needed we were also asked to have a spherical or circular focal element right here but other than that there was full freedom to create whatever we want now during the first two days after the challenge was announced i was consciously and subconsciously trying to come up with ideas and with some brainstorming and input from my sister we finally decided that we wanted to depict some kind of a ghetto in the foreground with the character being a poor or homeless woman carrying her sick child through a range storm to a hospital in the city which will be the background the circular element could be a ferris wheel which i thought fit very well because it is contrasting to the poverty at this end of the city after i got an idea that i was happy with the next step for me was to create a very simple sketch or let's say a concept art to give my idea a tangible form and see if it will work i am not going to show you what i drew because it is hideous but it did help me with the direction to move towards what i did next was the character and this isn't something that you would want to do at this stage of the process because you might need to make some drastic changes to your ideas later. But I just wanted to make a first because I wanted to try out this awesome new add-on that I found which was called Human Generator for Blender. The developers were kind enough to make me an affiliate so if you decide to buy the add-on after watching this video and also support my channel in the process, buy through the link in the description. If you're like me and you can't sculpt a character to save your life, you're going to really love this tool. It basically gives you a bunch of sliders to define the body proportions, all of the facial features separately and even put emphasis on different aspects based on ethnicity and you can mix between them to get some unique characters. The shaders are also surprisingly well made and also gives you a decent control over them. My favorite part was the hair because there was a preset that had exactly the look I had in mind. It also comes with some clothing presets but since I needed a specific style in this case I will be creating it myself with the exception of the footwear. Moreover you can also choose different poses for your character to test them out or just get a starting pose to work on an animation or even have it as it is for still renders. The expressions library is also really helpful because creating those shape keys by yourself would be a very tedious process, at least in my opinion. After I was done with my character, I imported her into the template project that was given for the challenge to replace the original character. In order to do that, we need to copy the animations from the original character to our character. This is done by a technique called animation retargeting, which basically means that you transfer the keyframes from one rig to another similar rig, which may have some different proportions or naming conventions for the bones. But trust me, it isn't as complicated as it sounds. We're going to use the Rococo Studio Live plugin for Blender which lets us do exactly that. I'll leave the links to the add-on and a tutorial in the description so don't worry. If you're using a Mixamo rig, this process is going to be extremely simple but if you're like me and you're using Human Generator, it's still simple just that you need to manually select the corresponding bones for the first time you're doing it. Finally, you hit this retarget animation button and see the magic happen. The hands will be absolutely crazy in this case because the resting pose of the human character is an A pose while the provided character is an T pose, so some of the animations don't translate very well. Also, it didn't really seem to work when I manually gave her a T pose because the resting pose was still an A pose. I also thought about deleting this rig and using the Mixamo rig, but that would just mean that I would have to weight paint the shoes and recreate the hair, which I totally didn't want to do. So I figured a good workaround that did the job for me. I deleted the bone constraints from the arm bones and posed them the way I wanted myself. I mean, I wanted the original pose anyway, so it wasn't a lot of work. And since the arms just stay near the body like this and don't do anything crazy i didn't have to animate anything extra now it was looking something like this right now and she needed some clothes next of course i quickly downloaded a free baby model and positioned it on her back with some gap for the clothes before bringing everything into marvelous designer to work on the clothes this was my first time using marvelous designer but i was really impressed by its capabilities i was also able to quickly learn how to make some simple clothing for my characters because of its intuitive ui and with the help of some youtube videos i also made an exclusive patreon tutorial about taking animated characters from blender into marvelous designer and then back 
along with all the fundamental basics of the software that you need to know for practical usage. So if you're interested, consider checking my Patreon page out. But this is what I had for the base clothes, nothing too fancy. I also made this simple piece of cloth to make it look like she wrapped the baby around this cloth and she was holding on to it in the front. I also added some wind animations inside of Marvelous Designer to justify the fact that she was slouching from the struggle to move forward. After I was done making the clothes, I brought them into Blender and set it up properly, created the materials, unwrapped the baby and all that stuff. Then I exported the clothes and the baby, imported it into Substance Painters to start texturing them. The baby just had a simple skin texture and I also painted some parts of it light red to make it look like it was more, you know, alive. I started off the clothes with some pre-made materials that came with Substance Painter, tweaked their colors, added some dirt and some more dirt and some dirt on the baby too cuz why not? Then I had to create some custom torn fabric textures which are just some black and white textures that I'll be using to control the alpha channel of the material. That means that parts where there is black on the alpha channel will be transparent and thus it will give us that torn edge. I painted them black where it should have been white but we can always invert them inside of Substance Painter while painting. By the way, you can grab these images from the resources channel of our discord server if you want. Now since these aren't circular with a nice fall off like alpha brushes are supposed to have, I had to do some cleanup. The result was absolutely awesome. Once everything was finished, I brought these textures into Blender and set up the materials. I also did something that was totally pointless at this stage of the process and that was dynamic mud footprints. Why? I mean, it was it was kind of fun, not gonna lie. But that unnecessarily slowed down my computer and also the ground was totally effed up. I guess you have to make mistakes in order to learn. I did fix everything later, but right now I was more focused on building the environment first because I took my sweet time playing around with the mud. I wanted some high quality assets for this scene because I was going all out, so I got myself a Quixel Megascan subscription for one month to be used in Blender and started saving assets that I might use. I made some basic block outs of the houses using cubes and stuff, which I'll be replacing with proper assets later. These are just to give me some idea about the scale and position of the houses along with the kind of assets that I should use. After that, I started importing some assets and placed them around the basic shapes. It did require some experimenting to see what would work the best. For instance, I started off this first house with these concrete curbs but then felt they stood out too much so I removed them. I also wanted the second house to be made of wood so I used these modular assets to build the walls around the basic block out. Some assets like the tin roofs I modeled and textured myself but that was pretty simple overall. Since I didn't bother modeling any of the insides of the houses, I just used some planes to block out any of the light. And and act as walls instead of the houses simply just having holes there. There was more model shopping on Sketchfab where I also got the Ferris wheel base model from. I did have to change it later but I just scaled it up and slapped it there for now. I also added some buildings which were drastically changed later in the process but they did give me a rough idea for now. I also made this very simple procedural emissive material on the Ferris wheel using a wave texture. I could then later animate the phase offset and it gave me a cool lighting effect. I also animated the Ferris wheel rotating which was very simple to do. All I did was first animate the axle in the middle that rotated the whole thing and then animated the rotation of the seats in the other direction in the same amount. Then I did some more model shopping and downloaded some ghetto building models to put in the closed background and some huts to put in the foreground. I also got some modern buildings to put in the far background to make the distant city where our character is supposed to be heading towards. Moreover, I also got some tree models that I put in certain places to look natural and to also help a bit with the composition. Then I started working more on the ground, did some texture painting and added the materials. I also added some grass to get an idea of where I could cheat by not adding some details and for the parts that did need the details, I got some rubble assets from Megascans library and just added them in. I first added the grass using geometry nodes but then later figured that if I wanted to add some wind animations to it then I'd have to use particle systems so I did that. And it wasn't just grass, I also added some weed, flowers and broken twigs. I decided to switch to a nighttime look at this point because that is something I rarely ever get the chance to try out. And so I started doing more tweaks such as the building's window textures, I also added some more elements into the scene such as the electric poles with the wires and lamps. Speaking of which, I also added some lights near them to add some extra lighting to the surrounding areas. It also gave me a great opportunity to have some realistic lighting near the character in the foreground that actually made sense where it was coming from. Now it was time for more story elements and I wanted to add some more background characters in the scene. I decided to add a person who was writhing in pain lying on a bench on his wife's lap in front of the middle.
middle house. Just as a way to add more emotion to the scene, I made both of them using human generator again with the clothes made in Marvelous Designer. After this point, it was just a matter of deciding what details to add, lighting and story wise, and also animating some objects to sell the effect of wind. I used wind and turbulence force fields to add some movement to the particle systems. For stuff like the lanterns, I just added some keyframes for the rotation at the beginning and the end of the timeline and used a noise modifier to get some naturally random movements. For the trees which didn't have a particle system on them, I used simple deform modifiers set to bend and then animated the angle for each axis separately using the noise modifier again to get that random bend making it look like wind. You know, it wasn't perfect but it was better than nothing. A very important story element in my opinion was this signboard which denoted that she wanted to go to a hospital. This also helped make out the actual path by pointing towards it. I also added more characters, some of them were 3D animated characters and others were just cutouts of images that I put in the background. With some more details, tweaks and changes, the scene was finally looking complete. Now the rendering part was practically impossible for a complex scene like this even with a decent PC like mine. I kept running out of memory and with some optimizations I even kept running out of VRAM. Now Charan and Technical were super kind to me and offered me to render this scene on their computers but it still kept failing or taking way too long. So I just ended up creating a lot of render layers, separating each group of models that demanded a lot of hardware power. With a lot of failures and it was a span of about like three to four days, I was finally able to render each layer out as a sequence of .tiff files. Now the ground didn't turn out as good as I expected because I had to turn up the dicing scale on the adaptive subdivision modifier and that reduced the quality of the displacements by quite a lot. So the next obvious step was to combine everything together in a compositing program which is what I did and I used After Effects for it. I also did some color grading on it, added some rain, fog, some rain splatters, the water running down from the roofs and then falling again, some lighting effects etc. I also added some sound effects, mostly the running footsteps of the foreground guy, his breath, the breath of the main character, her wet footsteps, some crying sound effects for the wife in the background and also some baby cries, the haze in the background which didn't even turn out very nice and finally the sound of rain to cover up all of the mistakes that I made. I also added some ambient sounds that I made to just help with the mood. By the way, I have created a whole pack of these custom ambient music sounds, whatever you call them, which you can use in your animations for free. So check the link in the description if you're interested. And after all of that is done, I finally present to you the finished result, which is only five seconds long, so I have to loop it a couple of times in order for you to decipher anything. But yeah, here you go. The final video. So I hope you like what you just saw. It was definitely the most difficult project I've made so far. And I really mean when I say that I learned a whole lot from this single project. Apparently I couldn't get to the top 100 of the 2401 submissions, which was a crazy deal in itself because it was like top 4% or something. So I wasn't expecting it anyway. When I asked for feedback from one of the moderators in Clint's server, who was also part of the selection process for the top 100 submissions, they said that they somehow thought that the foreground looked historic or medieval and the background modern and that those were two different opposing eras and so there was no cohesion between them. Well they definitely got the wrong idea about the whole story so that just means that I need to work on my visual storytelling skills quite a lot. I wanted to make the foreground look like a city slum or like a worse off part of the city. Another person also commented on how my depth of field was a bit messed up and that the background blur made it look like a miniature but then there was the foreground blur which you know didn't make a lot of sense which I think is some great technical feedback and it is definitely something that I should keep in mind for future projects. Overall I'm very happy with my result although there were some aspects that I could have improved but with all the rendering difficulties and times where I almost gave up I'm very glad that I was able to complete and submit it on time. So that about sums up this video. If you enjoyed watching it make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that notification button to not miss out on any future tutorials or art breakdowns. Also join our discord server if you're interested to you know, no, just hang around and talk about art and stuff and also participate in cool events. I'd like to thank my new patrons who joined after the big change that I made to my patreon page which brings me to another shameless but if you want to see some behind the scenes content get early access to videos like these and also get some exclusive tutorials and even merchandise then be sure to check out my patreon page from the link given in the description. Also comment your thoughts down below on my animation or this video because that's a great way to give me feedback because I read all of my comments. Anyway enough blabber 
remembering thanks for watching this video and i'll see you guys in the next one